Hello everyone. Welcome. In this video, we will be learning an important organic topic called molecular rearrangements. What is molecular rearrangement? Any chemical reaction which involves the migration of an atom or a group from one position to another position within the molecule by breaking and making of either sigma bond or a pi bond is known as molecular rearrangement. Consider this molecule here where the AB, A is connected to a group called as W. If you consider this transformation, once it undergoes molecular rearrangement, we can call it as 1, 2 shift, you are obtaining a product where the W which is shifted to B atom. So in this molecule, the W which is attached to A is called as migrating group and the atom or the position from the group which migrates is called as migration origin and the B which is actually migration terminus where the migrating group migrates to that position. So in this transformation, so the migrating group migrates from one position to another position. What is 1, 2 shift? 1, 2 considers the position. If the migrating group migrates from migration origin that is A to adsent atom or group which is migration terminus which is exactly located adsent to the migration origin that means the second position by breaking and making a sigma or pi bond then that shift is called as 1, 2 shift. It is also molecular regenerment where migration, the migrate, migration of migrating group from migration origin to migration terminus take place. There are different modes of rearrangements generally observed. Two different type of modes of rearrangement we can observe here intramolecular rearrangement and intermolecular rearrangement. What is intramolecular rearrangement? So the name itself indicates that the rearrangement takes place within the molecule. That means the migration of an atom or a group from one position, that means migration origin to another position, that is migration terminus within the molecule is known as intramolecular rearrangement. Consider the mechanism where the W which is migrating group which migrates to the migration terminus within the molecule but this mechanism or this transformation takes place via the partial detachment of this migrating group from migration origin and partial attachment to migration terminus takes place. That means in the case of intramolecular rearrangement both bond breaking and bond making takes place simultaneously. Intermolecular rearrangements. Here the rearrangement takes place between two molecules. The migration of an atom or a group occurs with the complete detachment of the migrating group from migration origin to migration terminus is known as intermolecular rearrangement. The migration can take place to a different molecule from one molecule. The mechanism generally involves here in two steps. In the first step, the complete detachment of migrating group takes place from the molecule. So the migrating group can detach completely from the migration origin and then migrating group will become independent or free. Once it becomes independent or free, then the second step involves the attachment of this migrating group with the another molecule of migration terminus. So in this way the intermolecular rearrangement takes place where the migrating group migrates from one molecule to another molecule which involves two steps. How do we distinguish whether the reaction or rearrangement takes place intramolecular or intermolecular? We can use the crossover experiments generally to distinguish between intramolecular and intermolecular rearrangement. Suppose the migration of an atom or a group 
take place from one molecule to another molecule, then that experiment is called as crossover experiment. If suppose if there is crossover, then it is intermolecular arrangement. If there is no crossover take place, then that is intramolecular rearrangement. In the case of crossover experiment, if you observe the migrating group, generally it migrates from one molecule to another molecule. Consider this example, okay, where this produces four different type of molecules. Here, the migrating group is migrating from AB molecule to CD molecule, okay. So, the migrating group Z is migrating from CD to AB molecule. So, these migrations only considered as intermolecular rearrangements and crossover experiment. The other rearrangements can consider as there is no crossover takes place here. For example, if the migrating group migrates within the molecule, then there is no crossover experiment takes place. Same way, the Z migrating group, if it migrates from C to D, then there is no crossover experiment. So, in these, among these products, among these products, the first and second product is considered as intramolecular rearranger product. That means there is no crossover takes place. Whereas the third and fourth product is considered as intermolecular rearrangements where the crossover products observed. Consider a best example where freeze rearrangement for a crossover experiment. What is freeze rearrangement? The conversion of phenolic esters to phenolic ketones in presence of a Lewis acid or bronzed acid. For example, consider anhydrous ALC3 under thermal conditions. Consider these two molecules, right, where the acetyl is a migrating group and here the another keto is a migrating group. And if you subject these two substances or substrates with anhydrous ALC3 at freeze rearrangement conditions, you will obtain four different type of products. Among these four, these two, third and fourth products considered as intramolecular, that means no crossover products, where the migrating group which migrates within the molecule in the both products, whereas in the case of fifth and sixth products, the migrating group migrates from one molecule to another molecule. So, fifth and sixth products can be considered as crossover experiment. There are different types of molecular elements we can observe. Generally, almost all reactions undergo intramolecular rearrangements or one two shifts based on the initial fragmentation of the migrating group these molecular rearrangements are three different types one is heterocyclic rearrangement heterolytic rearrangement and another one is homolytic rearrangement then aromatic rearrangements heterolytic rearrangements in these rearrangements in the first step the heterolytic cleavage of bond between the migration origin and migrating group occurs which leads to the formation of ionic species as we know the heterolytic cleavage always leads to the formation of ionic species either positive or negative which can also called as electrophile or nucleophile respectively consider this example where the heterolytic cleavage takes place between this migrating group and migration origin which gives you two different species one is electrophilic species that is positively charged species another one is nucleophilic or negatively charged species based on this nature of migrating group after cleavage these rearrangements heterolytic rearrangements again divided into or classified into two different types one is nucleophilic or anionotropic rearrangements another one is electrophilic or cationotropic rearrangements that means in the case of nucleophilic or anionotropic rearrangements the migrating group migrates as nucleophile. In the case of electrophilic or cationotropic rearrangements, the migrating group migrates as positive charge. Consider the nucleophilic rearrangements or anionotropic rearrangements where the migrating group migrates by retaining its electron pairs from migration origin to electron deficient migration terminus. So that means in this case migration terminus must be electron deficient. So that means the migrating group is a nucleophile and the migration terminus is an electrophile. Consider this an example here. The migrating group is migrating by retaining its electron pairs towards the electron deficient, electron deficient migration terminus. Here the 
A and B. A and B may be, that means migration origin and migration terminus may be carbon, nitrogen or oxygen. Migrating, migrating group may be hydride, alkyl, aryl, vinyl, hydroxyl, amino, halo, any group, etc. So these molecules where the migrating group migrates by retaining its electrons considered as nucleophilic rearrangements or anionotropic rearrangements. Then another kind of a rearrangement is electrophilic rearrangements or cationotropic rearrangements where the migrating group migrates without retaining its electron pair from migration origin towards electron rich migration terminus. That is the migrating group here is considered as electrophile and the migration terminus is a nucleophile. Consider this molecule where the migrating group is migrating without, without retaining its electron pair, right? Here the migration origin must be a nitrogen atom or oxygen atom or sulfur atom where migrating group is alkyl group. And then homolytic rearrangements. As we know the initial fragmentation, initial fragmentation between the migrating group and migration origin, if it is homolytic cleavage, generally it leads to the formation of radicals. So that means homolytic rearrangement considered as a radical rearrangement also. Consider this example where the homolytic cleavage is taking place between the migration origin and migrating group which leads to the radicals. So that means here migration origin is a radical and um, migrating group is an a radical and migration terminus is also radical. So generally these reactions can be observed in gaseous state because gaseous state generally gives you free radicals always. Consider another type of rearrangements called aromatic rearrangements where the migration of an atom or group from one position to another position that is from migration origin to migration terminus occurs within the aromatic system. For example, freeze rearrangements are the best example. Of all these, the nucleophilic rearrangements or anionotropic rearrangements are the most common reactions. So consider nucleophilic anionotropic rearrangements. Nucleophilic migrating group generally migrates towards the electron deficient migration terminus. That is the migrating group retaining its electron pair during the migration from migration origin to migration terminus. That means always migration terminus is considered as electron deficient. So here migration terminus may be carbon, nitrogen or oxygen. So based on the electron deficient atom that is migration terminus, these rea rearrangements are further classified into three types. So they are these nucleophilic rearrangements where the migration armina, uh, or terminus may be electron deficient carbon, may be electron deficient nitrogen or may be electron deficient oxygen. So if the migrating group migrates towards electron deficient carbon, so there are different reactions generally involved where the migrating group migrates towards the electron deficient carbon, where migration terminus is electron deficient, that is carbon. So these are the different reactions generally involved, that is pinacol pinacolone rearrangement, where 1, 2 diols are generally rearranged into corresponding ketones. Wagner Mirwin rearrangement generally involves the carbocation intermediates here and Demsano rearrangement, diinone phenol rearrangement, benzylic, benzyl benzylic acid rearrangement where the diketones are converted to alpha hydroxy carboxylic acids and Wolf rearrangement. So these all reactions are considered the where the migration origin migrates from migration origin towards electron deficient carbon. And if the migrating group migrates towards electrophilic nitrogen, by retaining its electrons, there are different reactions involved in organic synthesis. Beckman rearrangement, where the hydro oxymes, oxymes, heat oxymes generally rearrange to corresponding amides, cyclic amides, okay, and Hoffman rearrangement, Curtius rearrangement, Smith rearrangement, and Lawson rearrangement. All these rearrangements comes under the electron deficient nitrogen migration terminus category. And Migration towards electron deficient oxygen where the migration terminus is, is oxygen atom which is electron deficient. There are different reactions involved here, bayer wheeler rearrangement, Dawkins rearrangement and hydroperoxy rearrangement. There are some electrophilic or cationotropic rearrangements where the migrating group migrates towards the nucleophilic migration terminus. The reactions are Fiorsky rearrangement, Stevens rearrangement, Neber rearrangement, 
Somalite has a rearrangement and Wittig rearrangement. So these all reactions generally involve in organic synthesis where either nucleophilic uh, rearrangements or cationotropic. In conclusion, in this video, we understand the definition of molecular rearrangement and the types of molecular rearrangements and different categories of migration, uh, re molecular rearrangements where the migration terminus or the bond breakage between the migration migrating group and migration origin takes place. So there are different kind of molecular rearrangements we have observed and with their examples also. Thank you. Thank you for your patience.